Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And joining us once again is our good friend Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. Uh, he is here and has been here many times to talk to us about weather satellites and how those can help Alaskans understand our weather, how we can do better detection, keep more people safe from things even like volcanic ash. But today, Eric, you're going to talk to us a little bit more about weather satellites and how that can keep Alaskans safe and protect our property from wildfire. Right? That's right, Dave. Uh, today's topic is uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh -huh. And uh, thanks for having us back again to Alaska Anytime. Weather. Well, um, weather satellites have a lot of different instruments on them. Uh -huh. It turns out that the electromagnetic spectrum has a lot going on in it, and only one part of that is visible light, what we see. Right. Weather satellites, of course, report that. Today's topic is wildfires. Okay. There are some people who say that in Alaska in the summertime, you don't have severe weather. These people are usually from Oklahoma <laughs> or somewhere, and, and F5 tornadoes tend not to occur in Alaska. Right. People have also said what we do have in the summer. What is Alaska's severe summer weather can be hydrology, right. flash flood and, and uh, erosion mm -hmm. in the mountains and things like that, and fires, right. wildfires. Absolutely. Those were here in 2004, certainly remember that. We've got an example here from 2000. 14. Now mm -hmm. it was a quiet season overall, but in May, down on the Kenai Peninsula, we had a uh, wildfire on the Funny River, mm -hmm. and this is a satellite image from a satellite, a polar orbiter that went right over Alaska, mm -hmm. and we can see the plume of smoke coming out of that fire on the Kenai, curling down, it's caught in the wind, right. it goes down toward Kodiak Island, curves around, you can see it circulating around a low pressure system that's in the Gulf and of Alaska. It was a beautiful picture. Oh my gosh. Except there was a fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fire there. The nice thing is with this satellite image, you can tell where, this, where the fire origin is, where right. the smoke is coming from. And um, it's a color image. We're looking at the wavelength spectrum of about 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers or microns. Mm -hmm. That's what the human eye would see. If you were riding on the satellite and looked down, you could see this kind of an image. Right. So that's pretty nice. But it turns out there's more to the electromagnetic spectrum than just visible light. Okay. You've heard of infrared ultraviolet, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. If we move into longer wavelengths, let's go to one specifically, 3.7 microns. Okay, 3.7. Why worry about that one? Okay. Well, we've got an example here. 3.7, it turns out, happens to be very sensitive to a certain temperature range, temperatures where fires burn. Okay. And so, we've got an example zoomed in a little more from that same Funny River fire mm -hmm. down on the Kenai Peninsula, and we can see that you get up into a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit, right. and that's where the colors are. We can see there, um, on the Funny River fire to the west and to the east, almost a horseshoe shape there, mm -hmm. is not only we're seeing where the fire is in a general sense, but specifically where it's the active so fire That is where front. it's burning right now. Mm -hmm. And it's 3.7 okay. microns is the important temperature there. Okay. That's right. So this is really important to firefighters on the ground, people that are making plans and directing the firefighters and where they need to go and cut the trenches and keep people safe. You know it. Wow. If you want to fight that fire, you got to know where it is. Okay. You got to know the leading edge. We've also got a movie loop, nothing mm -hmm. quite like animating it in time. Yeah. You can see the fire spreading out over time with a succession of film cool. or a succession of uh, images. Mm -hmm. Now this is one channel, 3.7 micron. You know, we looked at that color smoke image before. Right. And that's actually a red, a green, and a blue. That's how you get color imagery. Uh -huh. What if you took three different wavelengths in the infrared? You went from like 2.2 um, micron, 1.5 micron, up to 3.7. You mix them together, you get this other kind of color image, which is even a better way to oh, wow. sharply bring out the details of where that leading edge of the fire is. Okay. You'll note, though, in the infrared, guess what? We don't see the smoke. Uh, well, that's too that's bad. Okay. And on these movie loops, you can see the clouds go by. These channels can't see through clouds. The lesson is there's no one perfect solution. You've got to okay. have the visible, you've got to have some of that infrared single 3.7 channel, some of that infrared mixing mm -hmm. to help get a different perspective. Another one, we've talked before about a, a fun channel called the Day-Night Band. Yes, one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. And in Alaska in the winter, it's great. We've got all this darkness. The Day-Night Band is so sensitive to seeing light, uh -huh. um, you can see features that otherwise aren't available. Now, in Alaska, when you have a forest fire, it tends to be light out all the time. Right. It's our summer. But we can go down south to the Rim Fire in California in okay. 2013. Now, okay, it was in California, not Alaska, but Alaskan crews went down to fight that fire, so we Fair can enough. talk about it here on Alaska weather. Here we have... Uh, a 3.7 micron channel shot of the of the rim fire again kind of a horseshoe shape showing right. that active fire front down there and then we'll look again to the day night band 
the visible light, and then you can see how the fire is all bright. You can see the active fire front and actually the, the city lights over there too. Turns out that the cities, while they're active in a social sense, are not really hot in a fire sense. So um, they don't show up in the 3.7 micron. They're not hot like a fire is, but the fire in the cities look the same from a visible light perspective. And a fun thing here too is that we can see the smoke plume going north from the rim fire wow. on the uh, on the day-night band. So yeah. if we were ever to have, like in 2004 in Alaska, you get mm -hmm. dark at night, we still had an active fire season that year. Right, that was, right. a, you know, that really bad year. The day-night band didn't exist then, but it, if we had fires now in August, we could use it then. The lesson here is weather satellites, they offer many different wavelengths of light. Uh -huh. Some are used for different purposes, and some of these we just looked at tonight are especially helpful here in Alaska to find and to track the behavior of these wildfires so the crews can go out there and do their jobs. Sure, sure. So a satellite toolbox for the, the firefighting crews and the fire weather forecasters, and it just underlines how important satellites are, uh, especially for Alaska and our, our mission for the National Weather Service to uh, protect life and property and uh, also to enhance the national economy. So wonderful mm -hmm. stuff there, Eric. And people can look at pictures uh, like this anytime by going to gina.alaska.edu. Uh, you'll find images there all around Alaska at various times of the year and not just about fire weather, but uh, volcanic ash and smoke and uh, anything else you want to check out. They're always beautiful pictures and always interesting to look at no matter what time of the day. Thanks again for joining us, Eric. We appreciate it and welcome you back anytime. Uh, for this edition of Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. See you next time.